Hello my friends, my name is Forge and welcome back to our brand new video. So today we get our hands on a brand new beta for Minecraft Bedrock Edition on Windows 10, Xbox and Android devices. And it is 1.16.210.51. Now this week's beta has given us a bunch of changes to GOATS. We got some changes to RTX and a few smaller features. Now without any ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So here we are inside the world and I was not joking when I said that there is a lot of changes to goats. You see most of these changes? Most of these changes are regarding goats. It's absolutely insane the amount of love that goats get in this beta. So anyway, let's go ahead and get right into this and let's take a look at the first one which is goats no longer set ram attack position to unreachable block round obstacle. Goats no longer have problems moving up full blocks when they're tempted or to reach breed partner after nearest attackable target state is triggered. Goats no longer jump onto magma blocks. Goats can now jump to several non-full blocks which includes like slabs, stairs. We have goats no longer have problems pathing to each other to breed. Game no longer crashes after a goat is killed by shulkers. I'm guessing that the shulkers, they do not like goats and then the goat would just end up crashing the game. Not very good. Goats on leads now quickly follow the player. Goats now only spawn one baby at a time. Goats no longer attack armor stands. Now that was the thing. Goats, they did not like armor stands for some reason. And if I remember right, I think when the Ravager was first added to the game, it had that same behavior. Creepers no longer attack back after being ran by a goat. Goats no longer overshoot or undershoot their jumps. Goats can now always correctly be attacked after jumping. Goats no longer perform radically high jumps. Goats no longer miss motionless players when they perform their ram attack. Goats now only drop two horns each. And the number of horns that the drop is represented by the model. So the way that a goat drops a horn, it has to ram into a tree. And once it rams into a tree, it will lose one of its horns. Now originally they would only drop one horn at a time. So after they lost one horn, then that was it. You wouldn't be able to get any more horns. The goats were all used up. But now if a goat does hit a tree trunk twice, it will go and drop two horns, which is pretty good. Next up, baby goats knock back their target a shorter distance. Ram knockback distance is dependent on speed. Goats now knock back the first target and intersects. Goats now try to retake their target that moves from its ram attack for a short amount of time. So let's say you get out of the ram position, then the goat, it will go and try to reposition itself to try to retake its target. Goats now flip their knockback target slightly higher in the air. Ram attack check the path based on the height of the mob that's ramming. Goats no longer jump from honey. Baby goats do not jump as far as adults. Goats should only very rarely jump to flat planes. Goats no longer jump if they are moved from their starting position. The goat spawning colors have been updated. A goat model has been updated to have the correct rotation for its head. And that's going to be something for leads. Because originally for a lead, you would not be able to put the lead correctly on the goat. They had to go in, they had to go and fix the model for that in order for the lead to work properly. Goats now have a minimum ram distance. It now tries to find a ram position in between the minimum ram distance and the maximum ram distance. Preferring further distances. Goats can now go through non-solid blocks and when they ram, the shield now grants partial knockback protection from the ram attack. Powder snow block now show the block breaking animation when it's being mined. Powder snow blocks are no longer transparent when looked at through the clouds. The updated the loading screen tips, mining a crimson ife with silk touch now returns a placeable block. And they also fixed the bug where parrots could fly upwards indefinitely. Zombie villagers spawned from zombie spawners on the marketplace worlds that were created after version 1.11 now correctly spawn as version 2 zombie villagers and when cured they will now correctly turn into v2 villagers. Horses and donkeys, mules, skeleton horses and zombie horses can now properly be given custom names and identified with the respective runtime identifier. Fix an issue with maps rendering over transparent objects when it's attached to an auto frame in RTX worlds. They reduce the ghosting of fish when viewed through the water with DLSS enabled. So that's something to do with RTX as well. Now pouring water on top snow no longer creates snowballs. So let's go and test this really quickly. Right here we resolve a top snow. So if I go ahead and place down a bunch of these, we have resolved a shovel in a water bucket. 
Originally, you would be able to get yourself snowballed very easily by using a water bucket. And I don't know why they made this change. I don't really like the change as much because using a water bucket, it was just so much faster. It was a lot easier and a lot better just to gather up snowballs. So if I go and place it down, look at that. We no longer get snowballs, which is very, very unfortunate. Oh boy, I do not like this change at all. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you like this change. Go and let me know. What do you think of it? But anyway, we now resolve the final feature, which is using bone meal in warm ocean biomes now only generates seagrass, coral, and coral fans. And with all that, that is it for all of the changes inside of this beta. I do want to hear your thoughts down below in the comments about what you think of this beta. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then let me know by leaving an icon and in subscribe so you never miss an upload. For now, I hope you have a logical day, and I will catch you next time. Bye!